want to kind of have smooth sailing. They want to have bragging rights over the opponents. But look at this, Magnus suddenly upping the pace. Uh, maybe he was just shifting position. Suddenly he's going for this white king and the pawn is going to capture on G2 any moment now. And it's really reminiscent of that game earlier where Ferruja was able to checkmate his opponent with a king out in the open. Um, I really, really fear for Fedoseev's life. Credit to Fedoseev, poker face there on the camera. But after pawn takes G2 attacking this rook in the corner, the white king is going to be shorn of its protection. And there's going to be all sorts of sacrifices in the air. I'm looking at the F3 square. I'm looking at this bishop jumping in later to E4. Um, there are threats on white side. Um, it's all about the clock now for Magnus. Maybe there's a, a lot to calculate right now, but definitely winning for black if he can hold his nerve, if he can uh, can maintain this level of accuracy we've shown. Uh, Robert, white, wow. Okay, wow. gives up the rook in the corner. Do you think we'll see an under promotion? We there have we seen it, yes. Yeah, that is always fun to play in a game, and it was necessary, everyone, because you have to count tempo by tempo if you establish a new queen there you would have lost both of your queens so he had to take and promote to a knight because it's a check and then he could save his uh, queen so i uh, just david is showing this would have won for white because both queens uh would have left the board so what a find by fedoseev and a quick response from magnus i, I think fedoseev is doing the right thing when you are in a winner go down to the loser's bracket moment, you need to throw everything at Magnus. And at least we have an imbalance. And you know, Magnus has been grimacing throughout this game. White's king feels a little bit safer. So uh, when there's a lot at stake in each and every game, uh, players do go wrong from time to time. Even Magnus Carlsen, the number one player of well, more than the last decade. So as I look at this position, Tanya, I see that black is well ahead. The evaluation bar, uh, it's not lying to us. But do you see any chances for white just because we do have some material imbalances and perhaps play in a different direction? The biggest chance of Fedosev would have been if Magnus had the auto promote to queen turned on in that <laughs> moment. So you captured on h1 and that would have changed the game. But an under promotion gets the job done. Magnus Carlson is up in exchange. He's already up on the score line. He uh, is dominating this game from start to finish. It looks like Fedosev with the white pieces never really got going on the queen side. We see no attack against Black's king. White king still feeling a bit of pressure. The knight falls back. The f4 bishop cannot be given up. Uh, but I do see the bishop on d3 lining up with the rook on g6. David, is this more complicated than what meets the eye at first? I think so. I think, uh, yes, it's complicated and yes, it's imbalanced. That's the key for Fedoseev. He cannot let it be just a clear cut, kind of a straight linear variation that Magnus has to work out and then it's over and then it's a draw or a black win. He has to make it, uh, as we mentioned earlier, a bit muddy, those waters. He has to complicate the issue. And um, I do love the white bishops. I'm very biased. My favorite piece, those bishops, Magnus's favorite pieces. I'll uh, give a secret there. But uh, in the meantime, okay. Rook to g5, a really classy move. And uh, if rooks disappear, I do fear for Fedoseev then. He's just trying to, again, simplify the equation, Magnus Carlsen. And rook to h6, the bar slides down. Robert, what's happened here? Uh, is this a necessary kind of gamble by Fedoseev? What's he missed? It is. Yeah, he knew that if he traded rooks, he had no winning chances, so he'd rather lose. He wants to go down swinging. The Black Knight can step back to e7. Trades clearly favor Magnus Carlsen, who's ahead by material, and has the safer king. So you're removing defenders uh, from the white side. So this is, it gets a question mark because objectively, it was a bad move. It hands white, excuse me, black a winning advantage, but it, you have to do it because a draw is a loss. So I think that he made the right decision. And what in the world is that? Wow. Double question mark, Magnus Carlsen. Uh, what's he missed? Is he just trying to simplify things? He's not losing. Evaluation bus says still better for Black, but yeah, I see the look of shock on your face. <laughs> Yeah, I just saw the eval bar rise up. We see that it's a blunder. It looks like a stunning move. The idea is clear, right? If white was to pick up the knight on d4, he wants to take the knight on f5. You recapture with the bishop. The queen jumps onto the game. It still looks incredibly strong for black with the rook so active. The queen on f5, the bishop on g3, not really getting the job done. And look at this. The computer says the best move for white is actually not to grab material to allow the activity, but actually just to push the pawn on f4. That was must be what Magnus <laughs> missed, Robert. 
<laughs> well, I think it is hilarious that the best move here is not even to take the sacrifice material, but just push your pawn to shut in your own bishop. But that shows how sad Ferroseo's position is. And that actually means that Magnus' decision, it deserves exclamation points, not question marks. Because uh, what is F4 here? I, he might play it, but where are the yeah. winning chances possibly going to come from for Robert, Vladimir Ferroseo? No Fedoseo? one's playing F4 here. I'm uh, sorry. What was that? Nobody's what was... playing F4 here. <laughs> what was that? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oh, that was commentator's yeah. kiss. I'm putting it on that. Oh, <laughs> uh, David, you were, are you as surprised as Tanya that he played F4? Yes, I'm glad Tanya you jumped in before me. <laughs> if, one more second, and I would have said the same. So don't worry. And uh, F4 is such an ugly positional move, but it's based on tactical reasons. The rook is trapped, and uh, I think this is what Magnus underestimated. This is why that we saw the bar sink. Even the one num world number one is human. Uh, he didn't spot in advance that the rook could actually be left on this square. F4 is a really classy move, but ultimately, as the computer's pointing out here, king to b8, the blue arrow, showing that black is still fine. You just need to shuffle into the corner. Always step towards the corner if you castle on the long side. If you castle queen side, good tip for everyone. Uh, but still, this is uncomfortable. I'm going to say for Magnus Carlsen, 40 seconds on the clock, a trapped oh. rook. Suddenly, for the first real time since we jumped in here, the nerves are going to be jangling. Magnus, he's going to try and focus. He plays the best move. Of course he does. Uh, he is the best for a reason, but it's going to be uncomfortable. He's got to untangle. This piece is a big problem long term. And Robert, he's going for it now. Fedosev. And Magnus must have some kind of attack against the white king. And the problem is the queen can't jump over the rook. So I'm looking at rook takes f4 check, some kind of sacrifice of the rook to go after the white king. They're not my pieces, so I can give them up and take it back. But Magnus, he's down under 20 seconds. He Oof. needs to find something because Fedosev was threatening to win material. Wow, oh, and suddenly he goes for that idea, Robert. He's given up a whole rook, Magnus Carlson, but he's gambling. He's got 20 seconds left. Now Magnus is a whole piece down. Wow, suddenly this has turned. He's living life on the edge, the world number one. Fedosev, this is his opportunity. He drops back his king. That was a check. Now the black rook surely is going to dive into the position. And uh, Magnus stakes a high. 15 seconds. Oh, so he's lost gosh. control. He has lost control, Magnus. He needs Under 10 coldness. seconds now. And the good news of Fedosev is that the bishop can block the check on the second rank, so you don't end up losing material. And there's no back rank ideas because the knight is defending. Instead of the rook check, Magnus gives a queen check, but white is up a whole piece right now. You could also snap up the knight on e7. It's a piece for three pawns, and the white king is out. But Magnus, one or two seconds, uh, and barely got his moves off. So the, I see the evaluation. White is favored. That is clear. But it's still within that drawing territory for Magnus. He is mad, but Fedoseyev is locked in, trying to find a way uh, to go after the black king, or maybe to... Oh, checkmate of the back right was threatened. A queen sacrifice from Vladimir. Wow, oh, that was beautiful. Let's just backtrack very quickly. One move. Rook takes queen was not a good idea because white would have landed a back ranker, a back spanker here. Uh, that would have been checkmate. So queen g5. He's going for the endgame, Magnus Carlsen. To take or not to take, what do we think? Should he keep the queens on the board? It's a tough one. Do you try to attack Black's king on the queen side? Where do you find the entry point? He decides not to trade. Moves are coming in fast and quick. Fast here. White's king is weak, so normally you would want to trade off queens, but Fedosev needs to win. He cannot risk the game fizzling out towards a draw. Again, Magnus begging for the queen trade, and uh, he's still fighting. Evaluation bar says only small advantage here for White. It's all about the pawns, Robert. He's lacking pawns right now. And great understanding. No surprise there from Magnus Carlsen. If the queens come off, he says, I can hold. Because a pawn chain is as strong as its base pawn. Without the queens on the board, it's difficult for white to make inroads. So we see another queen trade being offered. But Magnus does need to be a bit careful. There could be a moment where he offers a queen trade at an inopportune time. And thus allows white to transition into a nearly winning ending. So for now, he has everything under control. Tanya, I don't see how white makes progress here. Well, he's moving the king. He's saying, I want to trade on my terms where the king will find a nice spot on d4. The good news for Fedosev, it's very hard for Magnus to get rid of the c5 and the a3 pawns. As long as the pawns are on the board, white will have good winning chances. The king is advancing from a5 to b6, locking down Magnus's rook on the 8th on the rank to stop checkmating ideas. Magnus can't allow white's king to b6, steps up with the rook. One pawn's picked up. I think Fedosev is going to get the job done in this one. I see the eval bars equal. But David, practically, it's got to be really difficult to hold. 
but to be difficult to hold. But the big question, does Magnus Carlsen believe in fortresses? We've heard the answer a million times. He originally said no, but he he is relying on one right now. The Black King stops the White King from coming in. And uh, if you hold your line, maybe it's tough. Okay, check now, trying to deflect the White King away. He's trading pawns. He's getting the job done. Magnus, I was agreeing, oh. Tanya. I thought White had great winning chances, but not against an endgame genius like Magnus Carlsen. Suddenly, Black is getting closer and closer to safety. All he needs to do is eliminate the remaining White Pawn from the board. And uh, Robert, it looks like he's done everything right, Magnus. Although Ferrosev still has chances, because we do know that if all three of Black's pawns come off, we, well, there's no way Ferrosev is going to make a, a draw by repetition here. He, he's going to play on until the very end, because he does have an extra piece. So yes, Rook and Bishop versus Rook, everyone, theoretical draw. But when you have no time on the clock, good luck to save it. But for now, I mean, Magnus is not giving any ground, David. Building up time on the clock as well. Magnus had one or two seconds uh, a while back. Suddenly Magnus is up at 15, 16 seconds. He's really upped the pace, really upped his game. And uh, Fedoseyev, he'll rue another missed opportunity if this one slips away. He won a piece. He tripped Magnus in that time scramble. But suddenly look at the Black Rook just uh, lining up, pinning or attacking, harassing the white pieces. And okay, we see the final white pawn disappear. So this is a draw even if Black loses his remaining two pawns. But that is difficult. And uh, the Black King is caught on the edge of the board, so there will be checkmating patterns. Um, let's predict now, will Magnus hold? It might be difficult, but will he do it? I'm going to predict a big yes on this one. I mean, what the position was and what he's managed to get, just his resourcefulness in this endgame, has been just incredible to watch. Putting that King on A7, it felt like a fortress, then at the right time, managing to exchange, trade off those remaining white pawns, and now for Fedosev, he's got to try to push this position, but Magnus has enough time on the clock. Robert, I'm predicting this one to end in a draw. What about you? And of course, should be a draw, but look at what Fedosev is doing. Magnus' king is caught on the side of the board. And if Magnus ever has to push his pawns, then those pawns become weaker. Magnus looks bored. He's like, I can do this in my sleep. But what Fedosev, he's determined. And this could be a, a, a type of position where white does get the upper hand, takes one pawn, then the second, and then you have to prove it over 50 turns for everyone at home. Now, 50 moves without a capture or a pawn push results in a draw, and that's what Magnus is relying on. In fact, when was the last pawn push? Does anyone know? A long time ago. We'll go back and count. <laughs> I think the last capture was a bunch of moves ago, 15, 20 moves already. Uh, so Magnus is getting closer. It's the old Captain America line. I could do this all day. He's uh, defending really uh, resolutely here. And uh, he's got his king off the edge of the board. Look at this uh, diamond formation, the black pawns and king here. Um, but uh, I'm going to hold these pawns together. That's for sure. Uh, fair to say, yeah. he's got a few more moves, Robert. Uh, as you mentioned, he's got to win one of the black pawns or push them forward, force them, provoke them forward uh, in order to keep the game alive. He's running out of time, though, both on board and clock. Not making any progress. Surely now, as we reach 100 moves, this one is edging closer to the draw. So hard to beat Magnus Carlsen. It's unbelievable. It reminds me of the Toronto Finals where Magnus against Fabi. He was down a queen and he managed to win that one. And here he was down a piece and it looked like Fedosev did everything to get his chances. He struck when it mattered and then eventually Magnus, just with his resourcefulness, manages to hold this endgame. The pawns haven't moved. One hasn't been captured. We are getting closer to the 50 move. And it looks like it might not even go into a rook bishop versus rook. Dare I say it? This is a fortress, and there has been no way for Fedoseyev to make progress because uh, the rook on c4, it defends and prevents the white king from joining the party. So what a hold from Magnus, but what play from Fedoseyev. He should hold his head high even if this game ends as a draw and he goes down to the loser's bracket because if one little move went differently, he could have tied this match, and maybe if a couple things had gone a different way, he would have tied it earlier and had some different chances. And now Robert the countdown Korea? begins. Ten it more does. moves. Ten moves to get to the 50 move rule, and it will be a draw. Unless White wins a pawn or one of the black pawn moves. Tanya, I think he's... Wow, just before <laughs> it happens. Pawn to d4. Why did Magnus break the formation? He got impatient on the brink of a draw. Wait, that was a no bad choice. To do it. He just had he, eight he, more moves to go. He's making his moves with half a second on his clock. Look at his time. He's barely getting his moves up, and he's dropping his pawns. 
Wow. And Magnus knows it. He's not happy with his decisions. One pawn goes, the 50 move has been reset, and Fedosev, chances are back. Just as we were saying, he's on the brink of a draw. It was the 10 move countdown. If he did nothing for 10 moves, it would have been over by now. But it's the clock. It was the panic. It was uh, just that restless desire to do something. The human nature. And now suddenly, this black pawn in the center is not going to survive that much longer. It might get uh, corralled. It might get... Uh, surrounded at some point the black king will be driven away uh, still a lot of work to be done but now feder said he's going to be gaining in confidence look at magnus but you were right robert just every move he's getting off with two three seconds left he's really feeling the nerves now he's only human after all and uh, another song lyric dropped in there from David. I appreciate you. Uh, but I think that the White King, it needs to get active. And Magnus still doing a good job of keeping the White King tethered to the bishop, not allowing it to cross the third rank. So, Tanya, I mean, the move counter, it started again on move 117. We are currently on move 138. Are we going to see that pawn drop off? Or is Magnus going to be able to hold this position and not allow any more trades? He's got to try and do it, but it was really surprising how he let the move counter reset with that move d4, lost the pawn. Fedosev has to look for his chances to win that d4 pawn and then try and fight it in a rook bishop versus rook. The main idea is to push Magnus's king into some kind of a mating net, but step one has to be to grab that d4 pawn. But the first question, how do you even bring the king out of that second rank a situation that Magnus has trapped it into. David, do you see progress for White's King here? I see progress with a helping hand, but unfortunately, again, you're playing Magnus Carlsen, and uh, he is a marathon man. Oh! Whoa! Whoa! Magnus no! Carlsen lost on time! Are you kidding me? No way. Oh my goodness. Magnus Carlsen gets 